Welcome back to the GSMC Hockey Podcast presented by the GSMC Sports Network. We're back with our fourth segment of the night talking about the Boston Bruins season preview as I did the Anaheim Ducks. The Boston Bruins are second alphabetically in regards to team names. Since the Arizona Coyotes don't exist anymore, the Anaheim Ducks are the only A team in the NHL. Uh, We do go by team location and not team, you know, mascot. Um... So, for the Boston Bruins, they have a lot of talent as they, you know, they always have a lot of talent. But this year especially, they have a lot more high-end talent than uh, in years past. The Boston Bruins have really made a name uh, for themselves having that fantastic middle six along with their fantastic first line. Uh, But this season, I think their middle six takes a little bit of a hit. Their first line will be uh, Brad Marchand on the left, Elias Lindholm in the center, and then David Pasternak on the right. And then the team gets a little, the team four group gets a little bit scary. You have Charlie Coyle, Pavel Zaka, Trent Frederick, Morgan Geeky, Max Jones, John Beecher, uh, who will make up the rest of that four group. But honestly, that's a lot of third-line forwards in one. Charlie Coyle, I think, is a third-line forward. Pavel Zaka, I think, is a third-line forward. Trent Frederick might be borderline fourth-line, but third-line forward. Morgan Geeky, fourth, third-line forward. Uh, that second line is going to take a hit, and I think they'll get matched out, uh, matched up uh, or beaten in matchups uh, when that... Sorry. <coughs> I apologize. I felt that one coming on. <laughs> But I think that they will be outmatched when they are out on the ice, that second line. For the uh, Boston Bruins, it's still going to be a fantastic team because of their defensive core. They have six very talented and fantastic defensemen. They have Charlie McAvoy, who is one of the best defensemen in the NHL. Hampus Lindholm, who is... uh, Hampus Lindholm 30 years old. I feel old. Uh, That might be the first time I've ever looked... I remember when he was a prospect. I... I, that feels weird to me, uh, him being thirty. I don't. I don't know if I like that. <laughs> but I was about. To, I was literally about to say they have the young Hampus Lindholm. Uh, that was a shock. <laughs> uh, but Nikita Zadorov and Brandon Carlo will be their second defensive pair, which is a very talented defensive pair as well. Um, and then Mason Lore and Andrew Peak will be the bottom defensive pairing which is a very very good bottom pair uh this defense will be fantastic and with jeremy swayman it'll be the core of their team they might have a a hard time scoring goals but when it comes to the defense and when it comes to the back end they will not have any problems it's gonna look very very uh ugly a lot of their wins but hey an ugly win is how you win games so is this team sorry is this team good enough to um, is this team good enough to make the playoffs next year? I think so, but I do think that they regress. I wouldn't be surprised. I thought that they were going to regress last season, and then they went all and got 109 points and finished only one point back of top of the Atlantic. Um, without Linus Olmark, I think the team looks a little bit different. Uh, of course, you can't run Jeremy Swayman out there every single night. So it'll be a little bit more difficult for the um, for the Boston Bruins to get the same production in net in those 20 or so games <clears throat> that Jonas Corposalo is going to need to step up. But Jonas Corposalo in his career has shown that he can be a fantastic backup. Uh, there might just be something about him being a number one goaltender that's a little bit more difficult for Jonas than uh, uh, than being a starter or be, than being a backup. Uh, so... Are they? Did they regress enough to be, you know, ten or so points worse? I don't think so. I think this team is still fine. I think uh, the four core does scare me a little bit. Uh, I'll predict right around a hundred points, nothing more, nothing less. They might get a hundred on the dot, which will of course be good enough for the second or third seed in the Atlantic. Might play the Toronto Maple Leafs again. That'll be good enough to win a first round series. But I don't think. I, I think. It's going to look very similar to what it looked like this past year, but just a little bit worse in the regular season overall. Um, They were a fantastic road team last year. Uh, That's what really separated them. They were also plus 43, scoring 267 goals. 
uh, goals for. They were one of the worst in goals for in the Atlantic. They were bottom four in the Atlantic in terms of the overall league for goals for. Um, they were right around that middle tier as well. Um, finishing seventh in the league in overall points and around like 15 in the league in goals four. And I think their four group got a little bit worse. And we don't know if Ilyas Lindholm will be as good as we, um, you, you know, as good as we've seen him in the past. And as four goals against, um, it's it, it was great last season. And I think it's going to be great again this upcoming season. They were sixth in goals against per game uh, last year. I think they can only improve on that this upcoming season. So like I said, a lot of ugly like 2-1 to one games that we're going to be looking at for the Boston Bruins. But that's just fine uh, for for the Bruins. Uh, what saved them last year was a lot of overtime loss they, losses. They had 15 overtime losses, which was good for um, third in the entire NHL with the Islanders and the Canadians both getting 16. Uh, it's it's going to look a lot different for the Bruins. They're going to need to rely on Jeremy Swayman a lot more than they have in years past. I do believe that the um I do believe that the Boston Bruins is still a playoff team, but as I said, I don't like their forward core nearly as much. Um, and looking at their prospect pool, it's kind of non-existent, <laughs> really. Um, they have the yep yeah they don't have prospects uh they might have the worst prospect pool in all of the nhl uh there's no there's not even a name to really talk about um make maybe michael de pietro uh de p de pietro de pe i de pi de pietro wow i am struggling with that name uh their goalie uh their 25 year old goalie that they traded for but uh yeah not a good not a good uh overall core they're gonna need to keep building through free agency and through trades to keep this um team be good i still think that they are um a few big forwards away from uh contending really for a cup so i think that they do regress a lot from last year but not enough to not be a playoff contender as i mentioned so that's the boston bruins season preview i have them right around 100 points finishing about third in the atlantic um it could drop off a little bit more as I talk more about these uh, these teams and give them season previews. Maybe I do realize that maybe the Buffalo Sabres are a better team on paper than the Boston Bruins and move them down a little bit. Maybe uh, see other teams like that. Uh, the Red Wings can be a better team on paper maybe as well. So it'll be interesting as I go through these season previews where I do put these guys. I do you know start with a little bit more of an optimistic view. So maybe I will move the Boston Bruins down as i go through this but i will keep you know i will keep it ran down where i have everybody at uh and you know on wednesday when i talked about the anaheim ducks i talked about where i had them at still coming out of a rebuild i don't believe that they'll be too good i'll be i i think that they'll be right around 70 points next season so That'll wrap it up for this fourth segment of the night, talking about the Boston Bruins uh, season preview. When I come back, we're going to be ranking prospects, ranking the top 20 best NHL prospects, doing kind of like what they do in the MLB, giving kind of live updates to the prospects as we go through this offseason and as we go into next season. 